I'm a firm believer that everything starts with a catalyst. For me, that catalyst was Brock Mueller. In 2007, I took the head job as the head strength conditioning coach for the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, <laughs> upon arrival, I learned that one of our incoming recruits, Elliot Mueller, had been in a car accident, that he had lost his father, that he had lost his girlfriend, and his brother, Brock had been paralyzed. I took it upon myself to go to the hospital and visit Brock. From that day, the rest of my life was changed. I watched a man that was told he would never walk again. I saw his courage. I saw his disbelief. I saw that he didn't believe there was any moment that anyone could tell him whether or not he would walk. So when I walked into that room and spent time with him, we quickly became connected. Over the next two years, I tried to offer moral support, to try to give direction, to try to lift him up when he struggled. He went through rehabilitation for two years, and after two years, he was unable to stand on his own. He was unable to walk. He was in a position where he was going to be left and have to figure out the rest of his life for himself. So at that point, I decided that I would offer him the opportunity if he wanted it, to come into the weight room with the team in an environment that was explosive, energetic, and positive, and see if we couldn't start something else that would help him along his way. So it was a little bit different for me. You have to understand, for 20 years, I trained hundreds of Olympic and professional athletes, over 500 Olympic and professional athletes in 42 sporting events, two collegiate schools, and have worked with just about everybody when it came from some type of athletic involvement. The goal had always been to provide stimulus from a scientific background that would accommodate, accommodate adaptation to help performance, to help a person be more explosive, to help a person be faster, to help a person accomplish a goal as an athlete. This time it was a different goal. It was help a man stand and take one step. How was I going to do that? The same thing that I used as a principle over the years, which is Wolf's Law, scientific principle, the body conforms and adapts to the intensities and directions it's habitually subjected to. What does that mean? If I take a given weight, let's take the squat for instance, and I place that weight on my back, the weight is given 300 pounds. My body will conform and adapt two to 300 pounds in a downward direction if I subject my body to that on a habitual basis. Knowing this, I knew that I had to get Brock in a standing position to accommodate this adaptation. How do you do that with a man whose legs don't work? So I took an apparatus that we use in training, which is an air pneumatic device that adds resistance to an athlete to accommodate neural recruitment, and I converted it into an apparatus that became an assister. I took an old rock climbing harness that I had from when I rock climbed, put it on Brock's waist, attached the device to him, and was able to get him standing, as you see in the picture here. At that point, we were able to continuously add stressors. We came up with hundreds of exercises to accommodate the necessary adaptations to get him on his feet. Within six months, Brock was standing. Within a year, Brock was walking. He led us out for the season opener against UConn in front of 110,000 people with two canes. Truly a momentous moment to watch a human being come from suffrage and pain and a family that was destroyed to be lifted again by one man's efforts and one man's accomplishments. To me, it was an impactful situation, something that changed the rest of my life. I no longer coach for the Michigan Wolverines. I currently own a training center that's in Plymouth, Michigan, called Barwis Methods. We have hundreds of Olympic and professional athletes that run through there. We ran 122 through this year. We have high school athletes. We have young kids. We have the general population. We have everything that walks or talks at some time. Some that don't, but they will. From that point on, we now have people that have come in from all over the world, people that have been in similar situations, many of which are walking now. These same accommodations and same stressors. One of the major limitations I feel that we have in an academic world 
is we tend to follow a protocol. We tend to follow a list. We tend to say, these are our steps. And if it didn't work for this person, there's something wrong with the person. Maybe there's something wrong with our protocol. Maybe we need to take the extra step to evaluate each person as an individual. Take something out of your life and give the extra time. And push a human being to a place they want to be. Just like you do when you're a coach. No different. Over the time, we have a new per person that has come in in recent years. He now works out with Brock. You'll see Brock standing in this picture. This is Katie from Louisiana who's flown in. She's getting, so she's getting more control. This is Chris. Chris Williams is from Canada. He drives three hours each way to work out for four hours a day so he can go back. Chris was paralyzed for over three years. He now walks. Those moments to me are the most impactful moments. It's not a game. It's not an accolade. It's not a championship. None of those things matter. It's the journey. It's the people you impact along the way. It's what you give of yourself to somebody else to make them great that eventually is what makes you great. In my own personal opinion, when we look at life, you can't ignore the catalyst. You don't know where it's coming from. It may be the person who walks by you on the street. It may be a person you've known your entire life. It may be a tragedy. It may be a victory. Or it may be a man who was told he would never walk again, and the second time he enjoys the victory of a first step. I hope that everybody in this room at some point is given the opportunity to look their maker in the eye and say, on this day, I don't care if I die today because today I've given everything I could possibly give that you've given me to somebody else. I've lifted them up. I've taken my heart and I've put it in their soul to drive them to success. And on this day, I'm okay with death because today I'll die a champion. Thank you. Thank you. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. It's all right. Just, <laughs> just one of the many things that Mike has taught us is to always get back up, no matter how many times we fall. And every one of us here should always aspire to be a catalyst in the lives of the people that we encounter. May God bless each and every one of you as God has blessed Brock and I. Thank you.